right now in the precious name and the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for you being God all by yourself. I thank you for there being no other God except you. There is no time that I'm confused about who you are and your power, your preeminence. Lord God, your ability to be everywhere all at the same time, Lord God. Yeah. But help me, Lord God, to correctly, Lord God, uh, bring over your message, bring over your mindset, your heart, your, your heart's intent to your people, oh Lord. Yeah. Uh, Lord God, right now, I decrease that you may have the increase, Lord God. Right now, I know, Lord God, that I am still a work in progress. And I thank you, Lord God. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my shortcomings, yeah. Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I press toward the mark of the pride of the high calling, which is in you, Christ Jesus. And Lord, I love you. I magnify you today. Today, I exalt you today. I thank you for just being God and uh, being matchless. And, and Lord God, that there's none like you, Lord God. And I love serving you. I magnify you. God, uh, allow me to decrease. Give me the decrease that you may be increased in my life today. In the next, Lord God, time as I'm speaking, Lord, help me, Lord God, to think of the right things to say, to hear from you, Lord God, whether it be in the prophetic or in the natural, whether I'm teaching or prophesying, preaching or teaching, Lord God, help me to be instant in season and out of season. Lord, I thank you, I love you, and I magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. I bring you greetings from Houston, Texas, and I'll say even more specifically from Crosby, Texas. I live in a small town. We got about 30,000 people over there. And uh, but we, we're right outside the city, and I bring you greetings now. And I want to tell you again, and I said last night, um, first of all, I'd like to give honor to God, who's definitely the head of my life. And I can't say I'm always perfect, uh, I'm, I'm perfect or right. What I can say is he is the head of my life. Glory. And because of that, he can chasten me when I'm out of line. Yeah, right. He can get me back in line. And if, I, if we can continue to do that and allow ourselves to be chastened by the Father, yeah. and see, uh, then we can get back in line and stay right with the Father. And when you say, well, the Father, we in the apostolic church, we're in oneness. So why do you say the Father? We always say Jesus. Yeah. I will tell you, saints of God, that he's Father in creation, Son in redemption, and he's the Holy Ghost in regeneration. Lord. Lord. This is the God I serve. There's not three, there's one, but he played those roles toward you and me. Glory. He played those roles in humanity. Don't be perplexed when somebody tells you, well, he's just the son, or Jesus was the son, or just the son, and, and God was separate, and God was separate from Jesus, and Jesus was separate from the Holy Ghost, the devil is a liar. Yes, okay, yes. all three were one, or are one. So, I want to tell you again, Greetings from Crosby, Texas, and uh, where um, I live in Houston, Texas, and I fellowship in Houston. And my wife uh, wanted to be here. She wanted to be here last night. She wanted to be here this morning and enjoy this trip with me. <clears throat> but it didn't happen. But this won't be our last time here. And I'm going to just ask my brother to have me back as soon as you can. Let's do a revival. Let's tell up the city. Let's invite folks out, and I'm going to be ready for whatever day you tell me. Let's get the folks in here, because Christendom is suffering. And this man of God has a taught word in his belly. He studies. He corrects. Watch this. He corrects himself. Not God. Yeah. See, that's the heart of a pastor when he can do that. I'm, I'm going to move past that. But I want to correctly exegete some things that I said last night so you could understand where I was coming from. I, uh, I felt like I really did not explain something uh, well and may have lost some of you last night when I said that God, as Jesus Christ, as he stood on, he was on the cross, that he said to the people, he said to, to God rather, and he spoke to God, he was on the cross, and when right before he died, the world went dark. And uh, again, this is not something that you're just going to see. You're gonna to have to, the Bible tells us that we got to go line upon line and precept 
upon precept here a little and there a little. The issue is, is that we have to go and correctly line up the word of God. Mm. This book, there are 783,173 words. 31,102 verses, 1,189 chapters, 66 books, two testaments, yes. and one Bible. <laughs> my, 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 my. Can I, can I say that again to you? Yeah. Uh, there is 783,173 words, 31,102 verses, mm. 1,189 chapters, 66 books, and one Bible. Two testaments. Two testaments, one Bible. Amen. Which are the words to live by. Mm. We cannot go outside of the six, y'all this is in my notes <laughs> we cannot go outside of this to find life mm. you might be able to go outside of this to study mm -hmm. but you don't find life outside of this book oh, oh my god, god. Oh, right. you may go outside of this to shine a light on something that you may know or something that you may study but this is the book of life. Jesus. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Isaiah 28 and 10 lets us know that these things should be line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So we are challenged to do some certain things. We're challenged to do some things that the Word of God wants us to do. The scripture in 2 Corinthians tells us that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. It's yeah. in my notes. Yeah. It is the book. I'm teaching the book already. Uh, and so out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, which is where our legal system gets its origin, is out of this book. Right, which becomes the foundation of everything legal. 783,173 words that God put together just for us. Glory. I'm, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. Glory. Uh, so we've got to understand that out of the two or three witnesses, let every word be established. In other words, you have to see it more than one place in the Bible to create a theology. Yeah. To teach or preach to anybody. I'm, I'm in my notes right now. I'm Amen. in the book, though. I'm in the book. Before you can teach something, you have to line it up, line upon line, precept upon precept. Uh, and out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, you need the witnesses to confirm what you're thinking because our mind will run away with us when we get exposed yeah. to things that we have no need to get exposed to. He combined it in one book for us. He, he put it in one place. And, and, one, and, and he put it in one binder. But there's 66 books. Uh, so we have to understand that there are different classes of angels as we go on to explain and expound on last night a little bit. Uh, there's different classes of angelic warfare. And we would have to go to, and I think I'm going to go ahead and read my scripture and then we can get we can get moving Hallelujah. we're going back to Exodus yeah but we're about to look at something that would normally be read during a certain time of year call that we call Easter or we call more specifically resurrection Sunday Amen. Uh, but there's never a time that the word is not on time That's right. and we don't have to wait till resurrection time to read the word of God as it relates to or, or we call it, or, or uh, the Bible calls it Passover. Is that all right? Amen. All, right. all right, well, stay with me. There's a call and a response. So when I call, I just need you to, to help me out and respond a little bit. And I'm going to probably grab my phone so I get some light because I'm going to tell you, I just turned 50 and these eyes, they, they try to do what they want to do. But 
I grab my phone so I get a little light. All right, so let's oh. let's go. Let's get this light on here. See my wife, my wife. I'm, this is this is my wife Bible. They got the words are way smaller than what I usually would have in my Bible, but we're gonna make it happen. The Bible says in chapter twelve of ver in verse one. Uh, you guys go ahead and stand for the reading of the word. Exodus twelve one. Exodus. Exodus 12 and 1. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers and a lamb for a house. For an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him, his house, take it according to the number of souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the, and the firstborn. He shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. And he shall keep, keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the, the, the uh, congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and, onto, and on the upper door post of the house, wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast by fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden, and all with water, all with water, but roast. All right. You're going to have to suffer. Yes. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the uh, pertness thereof. Verse 10, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it will of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. 12, 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be All right. So I'll, I'll finish up right here. Just tell me Verse 11. How far are you going? There it is. All right. How far are you going? That Verse 11. That's okay. Oh, wow. Let me find that picture. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually last night. That was last night. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and read your Bible. Here. So, you want somebody to read 11 for you? Yeah, there's somebody. Anybody got 11? Good eyes. If you tell you are to eat it, you can blow your into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's house. Well, on the same day, I will pass through Egypt. And strike down every firstborn, both man and animal, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of the Egypt. I am the Lord. Thirteen and fourteen. Okay. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, 14, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. So we're about to talk about the fact that the Passover. Well, first let me say this. You cannot separate 
the thought from the thinker. Come on, let's preach. Yeah, yeah. You, there's no separation of thought from the thinker. You, you can't separate God from his word. Neither can I separate you from the things that you say. I don't know if you heard me, yeah. but you cannot separate the thought from the thinker. Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. I feel like preaching now. Yeah. Amen. The yeah. devil had his yeah. way, but Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And you have no power in this place. We command hallelujah. you to leave this place. Glory. In the name of Jesus, you're not going to hinder God's word, stop God's word, or, 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 any, or in any way cause a distraction yeah. of God's word. We love you, Lord, we magnify you, and we thank you right now for you being God all by yourself. We'll take this time to rebuke Satan and let him know that we are under yeah. the blood. Yeah. Now, my yeah. God, yeah. I, I feel like preaching right. now. Right. Okay, man, I feel my, my help coming on. Uh, can I get an E flat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. So you cannot separate uh, the thought from the thinker. Man. There's angels and principalities, powers, spiritual witness. You have a sect, S-E-C-T, of angels that deal with us. We have celestial angels. We have telestial angels. We have different denominations or different sections or, or, or powers or abilities of angels. And we have the celestial side, which is now the, the humanistic side, where we have the angel of this house, who uh, is the pastor, the angels in this house as well. The Bible says in, in Psalms, it says that you made man a little lower than the angels. So uh, we're talking about now that was pointing toward the celestial. Now in the celestial uh, arena, we have, uh, we have angels who carry out the mission of God. Somebody yes. said the mission of God. Mission. God has a mission. Uh, and so now as they are carrying out the mission of God, we must understand that God is telling them to do something. Uh, so we see in verse 12, and, and God was very specific here uh, in 13, and he says, and I, oh, is that 14? He says, and I will pass over thee. I will pass over you. And we, 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 we credit that to God. Uh, there's a, a sect of angels who go out and commit the things that God tells them to do. In fact, these angels who would pass over during the Passover time in Israel, uh, he called them I. Yeah, yeah, God yeah. He called them I. He said, I would pass over you. Why would he pass over? He would pass over because, my God, because you cannot separate the thoughts from the thing. From the thing. Hallelujah. Was, did God actually physically come down? No, at that point, no, he did not. But he gave the thought, the instruction, and the guidance to go and destroy everything that was not under the blood. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. We're not even talking re the, the resurrection. We're, we're talking about the Passover. The passing over of the things that we go through. You guys, I'm trying to get somewhere. Uh, so go. as we dealt with this last night, mm -hmm. and time. we said, my God, that the, the, the cross, when Christ was on the cross, he began to speak and he said some things and and as he began to speak, we realized he, right before he died that the, the whole earth, and I do say the whole earth, y'all, there was not a place on this planet that had light. If I had to, to, to go in my mind, I would say there was a time that Moses wanted to see God, but he could not see God in the fullest, and the hand of God covered the eyes of Moses yeah. that when he visited him he could not see God because no man could see God and live. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah. And so now as Jesus died on the cross and when he, when he died on the cross the whole world went dark. I would venture to say that God put his hand over the sun and shut it off I know. to this earth realm I know. so nobody can see the, glory. the sun the glory of God I know. it got dark it gets dark in our lives sometimes we, we go through some things sometimes and I, in fact, I remember a story in the scripture in, in uh, Luke chapter 23 
23, when, when Jesus uh, came up to Lazarus and he said you know, to, to, to Martha, and um, Martha was so discouraged because her brother died, and Jesus said to her, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad. My, 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 my. He said he's dead, but I'm glad. I'm glad you're going through what you're going right, through. I'm glad that some situations are pushing you to a place where you need to go. I'm glad that you're going through today or yesterday and you're looking for me to get you out of a situation. But I'm glad you came to me. The reality is, yes. thanks to God, when we're going through, we got to come to him yes. so he can get us out of the situation that we said. He said this word, I am the way. He said, I am the truth, yeah. and I am the light. And so I'm telling you the way, the way it is a door that God has given us, he, being Jesus Christ, it is a passageway. And if you look at it, you have to go back to the tabernacle and see that the door of the tabernacle was called the way. I'm talking about from Exodus, he was giving us a way out. So not only was it a way in, but it was also a way out of our city. A uh, way out of our hardness, a way out of our sin, a way out of our trials and our tribulation. This oh. is the God that we serve. And so now we see where God is here saying that this generation or sect of angels were given a mission to go and destroy everything that did not have the blood on the doorpost. And this is where I'll probably tell you my script or, or tell you my topic. If I had to preach from a topic today, the topic would be my eternity is connected to my yes, Lord. My eternity yes. is connected to my yes, yes Lord. Lord. Ah, you've got to understand today that you've got to have a yes, Lord, somewhere down in your sanctified soul. Somewhere down on your inside, you've got to have a yes, Lord. I know that God that sometimes is getting harder. Sometimes I may turn my back on you or feel like you don't exist. But my eternity is connected to my yes, Lord. I told the angel to go down there and destroy everything. He even called the angel I. Why? Because you cannot separate the thought from the thinker. And because we can't separate the thought from the thinker, everything that you are going through, you're going through because God allowed it to happen. And if he allowed it to happen, he's also giving you a way. My yeah, God. Yeah. He gave you a way out. Not only did he allow you to go in, but the God that we serve is going to allow you to come Glory. out. You just got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You can't be playing with God. You can't run in and out of the church. God is not pleased. God wants you to come in the way and stay in and under the blood. Somebody give God some praise. In this place right now. Thank you, Lord. My eternity is connected to my yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The problem is we're not saying yes enough. Mm. When God gives us instructions, we don't say yes. Mm. Our demeanor outside may say yes, but inside we say, no, God, not me. No, I can't go here. No, I can't. No, I'm not going to do it because our poise is walking in the other direction from our yes. Yes. Glory. So now he allowed these angels to go forward. And as these angels went forward under the, under the instruction, or this angel went forward under the instruction of God, we see that a lot of Egypt was destroyed. Because who was saved were those who were under the blood. Now we get back to the cross as it went dark. As it went dark, we have to see that God allowed the whole world to go dark so that we may have our time reset. Glory. So now your time becomes and time is one of the most important things to God is why he can sit outside of eternal. He can sit in eternity and deal with us inside of time. Yes. Because now he can control your going out or help you control your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore, which is a description of time in and of itself or even a description of no time. 
I want you to understand, saints of God, that our reality as we deal with God, as we deal with these scriptures, especially from last night, I just wanted you to understand that uh, we are not without help. Yes. And God sat on the cross, and I know I'm speaking specifically that God sat on the cross in the form of Jesus Christ. And when he passed away, or well, right before it went dark, you guys, I want you to understand today that you have got to forgive. That the only way that you can make it to heaven is to go through forgiveness. If I had to preach on a subtopic today, it would be, I just want to go to heaven. Yes. So is there a place, is there a person that doesn't want to go to heaven who's coming to church? We all want to go to heaven. I think I said it last night, but nobody wants to die. Hmm. But we've got, forgiveness is the way to get to glory. Glory. Y'all, I don't even think I'm going to be preaching hard. I think I may do this, may just be a teach today. Man. I've got the spirit of Carl Nevins on. <laughs> <laughs> Forgiveness is what we need to get to glory. You can't go on to glory without forgiveness. You say, well, you're talking about the person. I'm the person who was affected. What about the person who committed the issue toward me? Yes, yes. I'm not dealing with that person today. The word deals with them every day. Yes. We know sin is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That's not going to happen. But the issue is, what happened when the saint of God My Lord. gets come against? And now we have a responsibility to forgive the ones who despitefully use us. Yes. God gave us a new time, and we have to replicate what God did in giving a new time. We have to give somebody else new time. New time. Yes. Is there a place, is there a place, is there a place where God will not visit? And hold against. Is there a place that God will not visit in judgment? He is an omnipresent God. And because he's an omnipresent God, there's no place where he is not. I understand the, the power and the strength behind being omnipresent. Yes. Right? So there's not a place where he will not visit. There's not a thing that he does not see. Glory. I want to clarify some things from last night. There's not a place he will not visit. There's not a thing that he cannot see. And because that being the case, when we commit sin, or when somebody is, or when we forgive somebody else, we have given them new time. And now there is a place that he will not visit in judgment. Yes. There's a place that he will not go to in judgment. Yes. And I'm telling you what we have to do with saints of God is to get in a place where we cannot be judged or it cannot be held against us. The things that we ourselves do, whether it is sin or murder or uh, adultery, fornication, any one of those sins, whether it's stealing, picking up something from a job and bring it home and thinking nobody saw you. Regardless of what it is, there's a place that God will not visit you in judgment. And that place is one place that's called being under the blood. Oh. And the God that I know, when you are under the blood, the God that I know will not visit your sins anymore. Oh. We got to understand it does not matter oh. what you did. It does not matter what you do. But if you can just get under the blood, God will not judge you. God, that thing will not get you, amen, to heaven. And I want you to know today that as long as you uh, get under the blood, Lord. that God will not hold it against you. There is now, therefore, no condemnation. And I want you to understand that God sees your pain. God sees your hurt and understands what you're going through. God knows what you do. God knows your rise and he knows your down setting. He knows what you're going through. He knows that he has to provide a way. He knows that he has to reset time. Glory. He knows that he has to create a place to put your sins, put my sins, put our sins that he cannot visit anymore. Glory. Why? Because the angelic realm yes. that he was speaking to, what they saw was God. What they saw was the blood of God, the blood of Jesus Christ. And they knew that there was nothing more powerful. My God, hallelujah, than the blood of Jesus Christ. And this would be a place 
when they couldn't visit. And when you get under the blood, it's irrelevant what you've done in the past. It's irrelevant what you've done to your brother or sister. It's irrelevant what you've done to your husband or your wife. God will put that thing in a place where he will not visit it, yeah. where he will not come after it no more. But if you don't get that thing under the blood, yeah. that thing is open to visitation. Yeah. It's an open door for God to judge it. It's an open I door know. for God to deal with it.
if you ever want to know when you're in a situation and you're God conscious, and matter of fact, I'll say this, and I'll not even use the God conscious wording. I will say that the Holy Ghost begins to unction you yeah. that, hey, I've got to get some things right. You don't have to go tell on yourself. <laughs> Just go get it right. under the blood. I'm laughing because it's just that easy. <laughs> get before God and get it under the blood. Seek your forgiveness. Thank you. Turn from your wicked ways. Whatever way it is, turn from that way. It may not be wicked in the sense of the, the, the how we all often associate that word. But when you know there's something that you have to get right, hurry up and get it right so it can be under the blood. When you were baptized in Jesus' name, the blood was applied in your life. You are being baptized unto his blood. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. But when you step out from under the blood and do whatever you may do, and then come try to hide, it's still out there exposed. Oh, I know. It's got to get under. You got to get that thing under the blood. You got to seek forgiveness. The reality about forgiveness is like we talked about last night. You have got to be able to, somebody else outside of that time has got to be able to reach out and get you and say, okay, I know you offended me. I know you offended that I offended you or whatever the situation might be. But I'm going to reach outside of my space because I did nothing to you. First, I had to forgive. And now I can help you because the reality is, is I need to help you get outside that time because I may have had something to do with you being inside that mind. God, hallelujah. Being inside that time. And if I helped you get there, I ought to be able to help you get out from that. And the only way I can help you get out from that time is to forgive you. And if you understand the power of forgiveness, it's right up there with the value of being saved. Because the reality is, thanks to God, you can't go to heaven. It's no sense in get going down in Jesus' name and then getting out there not forgiving people. Because the reality is, is that you need God. That you need the power of God to be able to forgive the sins, to be, get, to be able to forgive the folks who offended you. You need God's power. You need God's blessing. Oh, I just feel glory, 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 glory. Right here. Yes. You need it. Yeah. You need it. Yeah. Forgiveness is probably one of the most powerful tools yes, that we is. have as saints. So after you get saved, yes, you better start walking in forgiveness. Yes. My wife and I often we go places we meet people who've been married. 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and what we do, we'll ask them, what did it take for you to make it this far? Mm. I heard, oh, you got the love. Oh, you got to be patient. You have to be kind. Mm. One person told us, and it blew my mind, it takes a lot of forgiveness. <laughs> You want to make it 40, 50 years? Oh, you got to know yes. if it's going to take forgiveness in your marriage. You want to make it to heaven? It's going to take some forgiveness to get there. You're not going to make it to heaven without forgiveness. I know. You think with the Holy Ghost you can't offend somebody? You most certainly can. And the reality is we probably going to offend the person who sleeps right next to us more than we offend anybody else. Yes. So we have to walk in the forgiveness of God. We have to understand that God reset our time. So we can reset the time with somebody yes. else. Yes. And if we can reset that time, we'll be walking as a new creature. Yes. We can walk and now we can have our head up because there's now therefore no condemnation. And if there's no condemnation, I don't need to hold my head down for what I did. Right. Hold your head up. I'm not talking about being bold and being ignorant. I'm talking about being to the place to where you know I gave this thing to God. God dealt with it and God forgave me. So I'm not going to be walking in condemnation. I'm going to be getting myself back in line. Yes. Because I need to be under the blood. And if I'm under the blood, I know that God is going to get me to heaven. I'm gonna, he's going to make a way. And he's already made the way. The way is called Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way. The truth. And the life. And so you can't come to God no other way. You've got to take it.
take on the land. You've got to take on forgiveness. I was able to teach today a little bit. I would have loved to have preached, but that wasn't what God put in my spirit as I, as I got here today. I want you to know that you are dear, dear soul Thank you, Jesus. to God. Yes. And anything you go through, anything that you commit, and that's why we pray the prayer. And I think my brother prayed it earlier, Minister prayed it earlier. Forgive those who trespass against me. Mm. Yes. The scripture is clear on that. We have to forgive those who trespass against us. Because guess what? You're going to need that same forgiveness. From them. Yes. You've got to be pulled out of time, out of that time, that space, that energy, that situation. Yes. Yes. In order to get to a new situation, you've got to be delivered out of an old yes. situation. Yes. You cannot move forward without the forgiveness that you really need because what happens is as you are committing that crime, committing that murder, I'll use murder today. It's a place that God can visit. I know. Because he is the eternal God. He's an omnipresent God. And he was right there when it was done. Yes. And he didn't get caught. He ran into somebody and killed him. And he was able to get home and get your car fixed. And he didn't get caught. Guilty if we were in court, this charge. But you didn't get caught. And you've been walking around with that burden mm. of whatever sin that you committed. Whatever it was. It is going to take a just God who has created a situation just for you. Mm. <coughs> to get out of being held in judgment. And what you did. It, will it takes a just God to create a situation to deliver you. In spite of the fact that it was done to you, you got to forgive to get help that person get you out of that time of non forgiveness. Yes. It's a two sided coin, you guys. It's a double sided coin. And it's going to take us. To understand that we have a God who has given us the blood yes. Yes. as a way out when we're going through, when we fall short, when we're not uh, living up to his expectation. Because every day is going to be a fight because the enemy would love to fight you on everything that you have. Yes. And if you could just stand still and see God's salvation. If you can stand still and see that you have a way out. Hallelujah. When nobody can hold it to the charge of God's elect. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are the elect of God. Yes. And because you are uh, heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and his elect, he can take a situation. Why? Because he is God. Create something called the blood yes. and, and create a place where he will not visit in judgment. Glory. You said brother so and so I don't I don't see that. <laughs> you said sister so and so mm -mm. No they did. No they did. Enter into that place where you can hurry up and see I was wrong and you go get it right. Yes. I'm not just talking about your spouse, I'm yes. talking about people. Sometimes saints of God will say, Oh well I'm gonna put the Holy Ghost down and I'm gonna do this. Mm. Well, you may die That's right. while your Holy Ghost is down doing whatever you want to do. Yes. The devil is a liar. Yeah. Understand that you make mistakes, but it's different when you do some things intentional. But you got to, when you realize, I got to get this under the blood, I was wrong. Nobody needs to tell you, you got the Holy Ghost. Nobody needs to tell you you're wrong. You, you knew you were wrong when you did it. So my it. reality is I've got to get the things right and get those things 
under the blood of yes. it. It is yes. my responsibility to take care of my soul and get those things under the blood of Jesus, the blood Thank you, Jesus. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Somebody put your hands together. For Hallelujah. In this, I don't know, nobody's gonna ask you what you do under the blood. Nobody cares. I don't care. If God said He ain't visiting, why well, I want to visit? Thank you. But I want to admonish you that you should get want to hurry up and get any and everything that you're doing that you need to get right with God. Hurry up and get it under the blood. Come on, come on, stand. Thank everybody you, stand all over the building. The altar's open. If you want to come up here and get anything right with God, this is the time. I'll pray with you. I'll be with you in the understanding of whatever is going on, whatever you are dealing with. You don't even have to mention that. We're talking about, here you go, Doc. I brought this today for, for a reason. <coughs> We just need a word. We just need a place to put it. God, I need a place to put this. I can't carry it no more. I need to get this burden off of me. I need a place to put this. And the place we got to put it is put it under the blood. We can't put it anywhere else. We can't put it anywhere else. Because no place else is going to be sufficient. No place else will it keep you from judgment. 